everyone welcome back to another video my name is becky and today we're going to be talking about an app that has just gone live um i actually had never heard about it before today i think it's literally gone live today as well so maybe that's why it actually looks really good from what i've seen i've made an account i'm going to go through it with you we can have a look together uh basically it's peer-to-peer -peer mental health support as it says here um and it's been basically created with help of um, well, it was the brainchild, it says here, of three Yorkshiremen, Logan Smith, Doug Dennison and Rob Cunningham. Sorry, Robin Cunningham. Um, and basically it says the app enables users to create bonds with people they wouldn't ordinarily meet and to bridge a gap between a patient's appointments with mental health specialists. This sounds, in theory, bloody brilliant. Like, it's basically like a forum, um, like NSH, uh, NHSN. No, I can't get it out, I'm sorry. NSHN, which was the National Self-Harm Network, which was a forum that was kind of bigger maybe in the early noughties. Um, I haven't been on it in a long time, but there was also Ryle, Recover Your Life. They were two of the bigger, say, self-harm forums that I knew about when I was kind of getting into it, say, 13, 14, so I'm 26 now. That's quite a while ago. Um, but the, the support you can get on the forum or a chat room can actually be very helpful. It can also be very harmful, um, but in theory, again, as it works well because you're talking to people who understand more than, say, maybe people around you might if they've not experienced mental health themselves. These people might have a different area of knowledge to you because they've experienced something different and you can help each other. It, it's, it's so beneficial to feel like, as well, you're not alone, that people understand, that people care. And forums can be absolutely bloody amazing for people's recovery because it, it gets them to a point where they can talk about what's going on. They can actually accept support from people around them. They can ask for support. So things like forums and hopefully this app should actually be a very positive thing. As I say, though, it does have its cons. And this can kind of be the things where it turns into a competition between people. Oh, I'm moral than you or I cut deeper than you. Or, I do this worse than you. Um, and that is really negative, like so toxic. No one really should be comparing them to their illness to anyone else's in a way. And I, I do it kind of. I think, well, I'm not as ill as that person. Or, well, I should be able to do this because I can do X, Y and Z in my mental health. And it's like, no, we're all individual. We all struggle with different things. We all have different problems. And I kind of like beat myself up personally, like looking at my friends' lives and being like, well, I've got Charlotte, who's a very talented nurse. There's Sammy, who's a talented linguist who does translation. You know, she's taught in French unis. There's Andrea, who was a nurse, and he's just a bloody amazing person. Like, I have so many talented people in my life. Like, even Jamie, like with his music, like everyone around me is amazing. And it's kind of, I look at myself and go, what the, what the hell do I contribute? Um, but Angie said something to me that kind of clicked, actually, and it was, um, well, you're not dealing with what they're dealing with, and they're not dealing with what you're dealing with. And that kind of just made sense. It's, like, just true. Like, I don't have their head. They don't have my head. So we, I, there's no point comparing the difference between us. It's irrelevant. Like, it, it's we're not coming from the same point where we can compare something because it's just so drastically separate to each other in a way because we all have an individual like world in our heads and we all have an individual almost like experience in the world you could have 20 people witness the same event and it would be 20 different variations on the story like you could probably do that with a million people and every single time there would be something slightly different whether in a thought process or a word used or like anything like that we're all unique we all have our own issues and comparing ourselves isn't going to help us we should be more looking to find the similarities between us and other people because that's what we can work on. And from similarities, you can gain a friendship, you can gain trust, you can build like just a relationship and friendship. And it, it kind of grows from the things we have in common. And also the differences we have in the way, like, as I say, we're unique. So we all have something different to offer. And this is why I think this app could be really good. It, it seems to be giving people a chance to help others through their own experience. Um, and so just as we go along reading this, it says the free app has been designed to help people living with mental ill health find friendship and support, whatever their state of mind. It's been built around research and consultation with a number of mental health charities and agencies in the UK. The app allows users a choice to appear masked, which is using an emoji to convey their state of mind or unmasked as themselves. Um, it said it's been written in conjunction with Middlesbrough based developers MGC. 
It enables users to reach out to other people with mental health issues to find support, have a chat or share experiences. So this is what I think is the key thing. Find support, have a chat or share experiences. We can all learn something from every single person we meet in this world. It could be a very varying thing that you learn. Like, again, we're unique. We all have different experiences. We all have different lives. We all have different thought patterns and ways of doing things. Anyone has something to teach you. And it's just looking to see what that thing is. Um, and it's also what you can teach them. Like, I think about the lessons I've learned in life. Whether they were painful or positive, it's taught me something to be better in the future. It's like trying something. I'm a hypocrite in this. I'm sorry, because if I do something anything less than perfect, I think it's worthless. I would never think about anything else that someone else does, but it's just the way I am with me. Um, but like, sorry, started to dissociate then and completely lost the point of what I was saying. Um, I then had to go back and watch it again and see what it said. So working backwards, um, what I was about to say is that I think as long as we're trying, that's the key thing. It doesn't really matter whether you succeed or you so-called fail. Like, as long as you're trying, you're doing your best. Like, And there's a phrase that I read, and it's interesting to me. It's, um, everyone is doing the best with the current level of awareness that they have. And I think that's really important to focus on. Is like, we can always grow, we can always improve. But it's also growing and improving with other people and, like, having fellowship and having that kind of mutual support. And again, as I say, like, I think this is going to be a really key thing on this app is, you know, find support, have a chat and share experiences. Everyone has something valuable to offer. Um, and so it says that users can search by age, location and illness. So when you sign up, it gives you a tick boxes of different types of mental health issues. I won't show you mine. Um, I am going to show you the terms and conditions in a minute. Um, I think it's quite interesting how they phrased it and I think they've done a good job of kind of clearing themselves of any issues um, and this is something I think is kind of actually really good it says here um, about in vulnerable times the user can press an alert button which automatically dials through to the Samaritan's crisis line so when you sign up you have to allow location and you have to allow making phone calls um, on your like permissions on the phone um, as well as your files and your media and that, which I guess is to share things like pictures and stuff. Um, but I'm guessing that's basically, if you're in a crisis, they will send the Samaritans your... They will ring the Samaritans to your phone. And I'm guessing the location could be used in case, you know, there's a, a dire crisis and they need to get someone to you and you don't know where you are, you're too hurt, anything like that. Like, I don't know. Looking at the very worst case scenario, like, I'm guessing the location is so they can find people if needed. I'm never happy giving my location to an app, but in something like this, I can understand why they make you do it. It's a way of kind of protecting themselves, I think, and I think it's really good because they could get in a lot of shit if someone used the app, they worried someone disappeared, um, were in a crisis, and then say that person was successful in hurting themselves, whether they're hurting or killing themselves. Like, the person that had talked to them before might feel terrible, like, they wouldn't have got the help, basically. So I think with this little design feature, I think it's really important. And so, yep, they say that you can find users of a similar age, local area, or those who suffer from similar illnesses. You can remain anonymous if you prefer. And I like this bit here. The app is designed to help people access the support they need on a day-to-day -day basis because sometimes all someone needs is a message of support to say, I know what you're going through and I understand. We hope this app will provide that. And I think this is like the app's core message is just getting people support, getting people to know they're not alone. People care about them. There are like ways to recover the support out there. And this is such a key thing that needs to be pushed more in mental health. Like I've been told personally, I'm never going to recover from the illness that I have or the illnesses that I have mentally. Um, and yet when I've gone into psychology, private psychology, they're saying, no, there's hope. Like these people just don't know what they're on about. And so, please, if you're being told that you'll never recover, there is always a hope that you will. You may never get to 100% again, but I, I can guarantee that your life can improve from some way that it is from now. As long as if you hit rock bottom, the only way is up, as they say. Like, eventually, it can only get better. And it's awful to hit rock bottom, and that feeling is... I don't even have words for it. Like, I'm not very good at putting emotions into words. It's harrowing is maybe the word I would use. Like, it just is soul-destroying. It's like the Dementors in the Harry Potter. It just sucks all the good and the love and the peace and the happiness and the joy and the hope out here. Um, but eventually, 
you hit a point where you can't get any worse. And so from that point, things can literally can only get better. And I think when you hit rock bottom, it's important to remember that. Because I think I've hit rock bottom and gone, right, this is it for the rest of my life. And I've thrown my hands up and given up. But if you get through it, you always have a possibility of recovering. You always have a possibility of getting a better place in your life, getting to a better place in your life, being happier, being more at peace, whether with yourself, with the world, with the people around you, like whatever. There is always hope. Um, and so, yeah, let's let's just go and have a look on the app now. OK, so I realised I hadn't finished making my account, so I had to start again. So I'm going to show you the checklist of the illnesses that it gives you to choose from. And it's a multiple choice, so you don't just have to only put one, uh, which is good to me because I've got quite a lot. So, <laughs> so yeah, it goes it goes in alphabetical order. We've got anger, anxiety, bipolar, BDD, BPD, depression, dissociative disorders, addiction, eating disorders, hearing voices, hoarding, mania and hypermania, loneliness, OCD, panic attacks, paranoia, personality disorders, phobias, postnatal depression and perinatal mental health. PTSD, um, premenstrual dysphoric, PMDD, psychosis, and schizoaffective disorder. Okay, so I've just finished making my account, and they, I've just got the terms of use to go through now. Um, so it does mention straight away about a crisis situation. You should, um, if you are feeling suicidal, violent, or you think you present a danger to yourself or others, you need to contact your doctor or the appropriate emergency services or authorities. So that is the one that they need me to put, and I'm glad they have that first because that is the biggie. Um, they don't want to be held accountable if someone does hurt themselves or does kill themselves and they were using this app and someone had given me advice that maybe wasn't the best or, you know, I don't know, what, however this works, I don't know how it works. I don't know if people, you chat like in a chat room, um, one-to-one, I'm guessing it's one-to-one, but like what if someone just ignores that person or thinks, oh, I can't handle this right now and that person hurts themselves. So I'm glad that they're covering their back because it's the big thing that could get them in trouble. So it's saying it's provided, it's intended to provide a discussion forum only. You should seek professional advice before taking or not taking any action when giving any guidance or advice from other app users. It does not warrant, uh, sorry, they do not monitor or check messages. They do not want information on the app is accurate, complete or the correct advice for you. So basically they're saying they accept no liability to any person using the app or any relief information or guidance on it that they receive. So they've covered their backs um, and now they're saying that, that the app or that the creators and the contributors or users of the app cannot be held responsible for any action or lack of action taken by users where they shall be based as a result, direct or otherwise, of information contained in or accessed through this app. Unmasked Mental Health merely provides the app. It does not moderate the app posts. So there we go. Let's have a look. OK, so this is the opening part of the app that you come to after signing in. And it says, welcome. How are you feeling today? If you're wondering why the name is Abaca, it's a long story. It's just something I used to call myself, like, if you took the vowels out of my name, like, Bucca, Rebecca. And it's Adam, Becky, Caleb, and... Oh, I didn't put H. I put A. I'm an idiot. I don't know why Hope didn't tell me that. I need to change that. But never mind. Anyway, it should be A-B-C-H. Um, okay, so we'll go for I'm okay. I'm not happy, but I'm not bad. Okay, so I was going to do a search for members, and then I thought I really shouldn't break the confidentiality of these people using this app. Like, if they're using this app, I don't want to ruin that for them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what every part of the app I can see without searching for people does, so we can have a look at it, we can see what it's like. So if you go for search members, I'm not going to do it, but you can search by age... Ooh, up to 100. I like it. That's inclusive. I can't select what I'm suffering from. You won't give me it. Okay, so we've got a bug right there. If you try to go for age before doing I am suffering from, you don't seem to be able to put anything in. So basically, like, you would just tick what your illness is or what who, the kind of people you want to talk to. You search by your town or your city, and then you just apply. You could do it within 50 miles, right down to zero miles. There's chat. So obviously, I have no chat, so I'm not talking to anyone. Messages, again, no messages. I don't know what the difference between chat and messages. Um, not really sure. Obviously, contacts and then alerts. So this is the interesting one right here, and I like this. I mentioned it earlier in the video, is the crisis line. So this is a direct link to um, the Samaritans, 116123, which is the UK number for it. And basically, 
Um, Samaritans, if you don't know, is a suicide hotline or like a crisis hotline. They talk to people that are in distress or that are really upset. They're brilliant. They won't call the police or an ambulance unless you actually give them permission or you ask them to. A lot of the time they won't even ask you unless they think it's really dire. And I found them to be brilliant when I've spoken to them. They've, I've very rarely had someone I felt didn't really care or didn't really get it. They, they were kind. They were warm. Um, they leave silences, which a lot of places that you ring, like they try and fill the silences or just rush you off the phone. They genuinely take their time with you. So really, like I cannot recommend Samaritans enough if you really are in a crisis. They also have like drop-in places around the country. You can look on their website. I'll leave a description below. Um, sorry, leave it in the description below. A link to um, where you can find what's in your area. And it's brilliant. I've been to the, pop uh, the local drop-in one in Harrogate. And they, again, they were fantastic. Literally probably saved my life a couple of times at least. Um, I remember just crying on them, for, well not on them, but like crying at them for like two hours at one point. I just couldn't get myself to calm down. Everything was too much and they didn't mind. They were still as supportive as they were when I first turned up. Like they weren't rushing me out. They genuinely care. And if you get someone you don't like, you can always call back again and you'll get someone different. You can find the local area number for your area or you can call this one right here. Um, which is the generalised line that will put you through to wherever there's someone free in the country. So yeah, I'm repping the Samaritans basically. They are fantastic. And as I say, I'll leave the link in the description. So basically, we just have a look a quick a quick look at the app. Um, I obviously I haven't really looked at the members and how the chat works. Um, Okay, so yeah, um, this has been a quick look at the app Unmasked. I know we didn't really go too deep into it, but I'm not comfortable breaking people's confidentiality on this app. So I'm not going to show you the chat and the messages. I might have a look on it and see how it works and then make an update to this so you guys know. But yeah, check it out, download it. I believe it's on iOS and Android. Um, it's definitely on Android at least. And give them a go, support them. Like, this is a brilliant idea to the people that created this. Like, again, kudos to you, and I applaud you. Like, it's a great idea, it's something much needed, and I just hope it works out for everyone. So, yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like. Um, a subscribe would mean the world to me, especially if you press the notification bell so that you know when I drop a new video. And yeah, thank you. Stay cool, stay safe. Take care, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.